And welcome back to the Neverboard Gaming Community in Spring Hill, Florida. We got more action for Modern MTG Saturday. Alex Bragan, Theo Caride. We're going to be covering James Biggie Connolly piloting Merfolk against Brandon Barrett piloting Amulet Titan. Brandon Barrett loves this Amulet Titan deck. He's been piloting it for a very, very long time. He recently saw it show up in Phoenix, if I remember correctly. It was either Phoenix or Dallas. I'm not certain I didn't. Yeah. I, I know it was in one of the big events. It might have been a Star City event, so it probably wasn't uh, Phoenix, but it might have been Dallas. I like Biggie's map. It reminds me of uh, Risha and Port. The land? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually trying to place where that's from. It's a Magic the Gathering official map, of course. It's got the logo on it, but what's... Is that Port? That looks like I'm, Port. I, it looks... Well, it's a Port town, obviously. I don't yeah. think it's the art from Rishad on Port. Well, it might be. I don't know. I don't see that many Rishad on Ports. I mean, this is modern, not Legacy. Yeah. I don't know. Wasn't it reprinted recently, too? Um, port? In uh, A25, yeah. Yeah. Last time I saw that card, it was like 70 bucks a piece or 80 bucks a piece. This is obviously not the A25 art, though. Yeah, um, if, of if it is a Richard on port. Um, it's... Mm, actually, it is Richard on port. It's the right... Ah. It's the right half. Aha, I knew that looks familiar. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I've seen oh, that picture the, before. I'm sorry, it's not the right half. It's it's the center of the card. It's like zoomed in. Yeah. But yes, that is Richard on port, in fact. Called it. The, the, the same, the exact same art from the Mercadian Mass version of the card, illustrated by Jerry Tertilli. See, it's interesting that Tira, Biggie... Tiratilli, excuse me, Jerry Tiratilli. I apologize if I'm butchering your name. <laughs> I actually, I recognize the, the art because I play Legacy, and Merfolk is what I play for Legacy. I've been piling that since Lorwyn, and I played Port in it for my very first time building it. It was Port instead of Wasteland. Well, you can't play Port in this format. You can't play Wasteland in this format either. But what you can play is Ether Vial and some green cards. Mutable. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if uh, any of those cards show up in this version of the deck. True. But yes, uh, Amulet Titan has actually been seeing some play by at least one pro lately, and it's a very, very thinky deck. Not easy at all to pilot, but Brandon enjoys it, and he's very comfortable with it. I he's like, won tournaments with it here before. I like Brandon. He's playing lefty like me. <laughs> we can actually, you know, have an idea of where his stuff is now. I, I like I like playing against lefties because our libraries will both be on the same side of the table. It feels like playing in, into a mirror. Well, see, it's weird because I'm righty, but I love playing lefty. See, when I, when I eat, I eat European style. I use my, my fork in my left hand and my knife in my right. That sounds like an American style so they can cut because they're right dominant. With well, right yes, I, I want to cut with my right dominant hand, though. Exactly. That sounds like an American thing, not a European thing. Are you, are you sure? No. Because no. it's the opposite from everybody else I know, and everybody else I know isn't European. I know a lot of people that are right-handed dominant will, will not always it, grab their knife with the right hand. Let me correct my cut. own grammar. Not everybody else I know is European. I obviously know lots of Europeans. <laughs> Um, oh, he's going down to five. Uh, did he mold a five? Yeah, that's five cards he just oh. mold to. And uh, he's scrying. He's, he's going to keep it. I don't see any lands in there. I think he's just sick of mulliganing at this point. Going to try and live off a top deck. See, I'm an aggressive mulligan person. I will mulligan down to four land. Sometimes or not four land, four cards in hand, sorry. Sometimes the random number gods are just cruel, cruel people. But he yeah. does have an island, so... It's, I mean, he's playing Merfolk, so what? He only needs two. Yeah, I only I see all blue cards in his hands. This yeah. would be a mono blue version of Merfolk. Uh, maybe. Oop. That's an ancient, ancient stirrings. stirrings. So that could get a lot of things for Brandon Barrett. He could get a land, of course. He could get a. He yeah, bears for the land. Is that the page that's, two, the signet? That's the Simic Spirit Guide, or it's gonna be the Simic uh, Land. The Simic Growth Chamber. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Okay, he does have an amulet. Yep. Why did I say Spirit Guide? Because I'm know. still thinking of that previous game with uh, with Sako and that uh, Eldrazi deck. Oh, God. Oh, he, oh. Fi he finds another land. Silver Silver Gold Adept showing Master of the Pearl Trident, almost dropping and it on the floor, but he manages to catch it. <laughs> yep. See, he's set. Biggie's set. Okay, yeah. B Biggie's, Biggie's going to be okay now. He can actually cast his deck, but we'll see if Brandon Barrett can actually go off I'm before that. I'm kind of curious on what Biggie's tattoo the C stands for that's on his left hand. I think that's the Cle Cleveland Indians logo, but yeah. I can't. I couldn't be sure. Yeah, I think that, that looks exactly like the Cleveland Indians. Oh, play two extra land. Yeah, Zusa coming down Ooh. here off of the extra mana from the Simic Growth Chamber that untapped okay, as a result so now, of his annual. So let's see, he played the one land for the turn. That's land number two. I think that's, that's Tolaria West. I think that's Tolaria West, right? Uh, it's really in a bad mm -hmm. angle. And, and there's that, land number three. The same sun home from before. Yeah. Let's see if he decides to do anything else here. 
Nope, he's I mean, just Fish pass. has really nothing to do for that. He's tapped out. He could have like a summoner's pact. <laughs> I don't know if this would be a great time to play it. Oh, Biggie's still... Oh, wow. Okay, so I don't know if he actually had land in his opening hand. It didn't look like he did, but it looks like he's got three islands now, yeah. one way or another. Like I said before, it's just a really bad angle for knowing this type of knowledge. Uh, that's a Reedry. Yep. Silver Girl Adept's now uh, a 3-2. I'm cool with that. That looks beautiful. Going to offer the trade with Azusa, Brandon, of course, not going to take it. 3-2, awesome. Az Azusa way, way, way too important to his strategy here. He wants to ramp... For days. Oh, entirely. Yeah, that's that's all that Amulet Titan wants to do. What was it? Once upon a time, Amulet Bloom. <laughs> Remember? Oh yeah, Summer Bloom had to get banned because that deck was so strong. It could accidentally Is win on turn he... two. It could accidentally win on turn two off of Hive Mind. Yeah, that I remember that. I did not like it. <laughs> Nobody did. That's why they Titan, had to ban Summer Bloom. Like tight. I'm sorry, but Titan and Eldrazi. And Tron are my three least favorite decks because I do not like decks that's like, I'm going to play a six drop on turn four. Theo hates big mana decks. You can put that in the book. Uh, uh, it's not <laughs> that I hate them. I just feel like it's very uh, unfair for the individual. Anyway, Brandon Barrett went ahead and Summoner's packed it here to put a Primeval Titan in his hand. Mm -hmm. Can he win now? He's going to play a Vesuva, copy Simic Growth Chamber, replay it, copy it again. Bounce a land. Now he's got enough for that Primeval Titan. Trigger Primeval Titan. More lands will come in. They will untap as a result of the amulet. That's a Boros Garrison. How did he play that just now? Uh, he played Vesuva off of uh, Azusa, mm -hmm. copying Simic Growth Chamber, untapped Untap. it, bounced itself, played Vesuva again, copying Simic Growth Chamber, untapped it, bounced another land, and then just tapped two more mana. Okay, yeah, okay, I see how it is. Okay. And he found the Slayer Stronghold. So now he's got enough mana to give the Primeval Titan haste. And plus and, two plus zero. Yep. And Vigilance, right? No. It's and plus Vigilance, two and Vigilance and Haste, yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering how he managed to untap the Sun Home, though. How did he? Because then he, one, two, three, four, he got it for... He's going to give it double strike. I'm trying to remember how... Oh, okay, he bounced it off of the Boros Garrison, and that was his third land play. That's what it was. Okay. Or, no, he can't do that. One, two. Because he, cause he had to have played a land for... I feel like we missed something here. I think he needed to slow down on that. I think he has way too much land right now. This is a very thinky deck. I can't keep up with what's going on with it half the time. Yeah, it's because like I'm in a bad angle, so I'm having a hard time seeing the card. How did he to untap the sun? One. How did he untap the sun home? Is what I want to know because there's no there's no. I, I almost feel like we need to rewind and watch it again because that just. We might we might need some instant replay action. Um, yeah. We're gonna have to watch this one again, but somehow he was able to untap the sun home and crack in for sixteen with that primeval titan. Not just. I'm not saying that it's impossible that he eight. did it. I'm just questioning how he did it. I, I, I'm thinking that there had to be some way he bounced it and then replayed it and then just forgot to untap it somehow. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. But the play, the play's legal. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's you're hard. saying it's legal. I'm, I'm questioning the legality of it's, it. it. This deck's really hard to follow with all the amulet triggers and just all the different things happening with the lands. Trust me. It, it's I, a very thinky deck. It's difficult to pilot, but Brandon has piloted this so many times, I've not, I've not seen him make a mistake with it yet. Yeah, that's that's the one thing that I can say about Brandon. He does play it a lot, and he does ha try to do the best he can with it every time. Besides, Biggie got put to four, so it's not like he was killing him this turn. It's the same clock either way. So I don't think it, it it's, it's really it really matters that much. Anyway, he's going to replay this Boros Garrison from before. In response to the bounce trigger, going to activate Slayer Stronghold. Boros Garrison goes back to his hand, plays it again off of Azusa. Yeah, he's and, just bouncing yeah. it so he can get it again because that'll be the third one. Yeah. Yep. Um, so so yeah, he had enough damage to do it either way. Still, it, it really it really doesn't matter whether he was able to untap Sun Home or not. Yeah, I still feel like we <laughs> need a look on that one. Because that, that was a lot of land being put in. And, and with the attack and with the entering the battlefield, that's four land from the Titan. Okay, so I can understand four of that land. Mm -hmm. Okay, but to cast the Titan, when he did the tapping and how he got that out, he tapped out. Uh, no, because the two, two, the two lands that he got were able to bounce lands to his hand. I think that's how he was able to untap Sunholm. It was because he could do it before One. combat. 
So, oh, because then Sun Home would be the last. Okay, so it'll be the third land play. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. That's what I said it was originally, and then we're like, wait, is that really? I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I don't. It's it's hard to follow when we don't have audio. <laughs> yeah. But audio should definitely be <laughs> something. Just put a random mic. But you see, you see how this Amulet Titan deck is supposed to work anyway. Oh yeah. You get you get the Primeval Titan out. You pump it. You give it haste. You just like, hit them you, twice. What does and Merfolk win. see? This is my big thing. It's like, what does Merfolk do against this spreading seas and hope that they screws up the mana base quick? Even quick spreading game. seas isn't really going to do it because the Karoo lands all those bounce lands. I, I know. That's my thing. It's like. It really doesn't have a way. That's like I said in the last time I was here. I feel like that new card that's coming out is going to be a, a big help for decks like this. The damping sphere. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it's going to help out a lot because it makes the crew lands just straight bad, right? Entirely, like, yeah, because all the crews just tap for one. So really, the only thing Murfolk can bring in to interact with this deck is counter magic. I hope he has some. Uh, what was it? Uh, what's the one that? Counters I, for something four greater. I was going to mention that because that's like one of your favorite oh, cards man, ever. And, yeah, it sees, I, and it sees no play in this format, but you but, just love this card anyway. Because, Disdainful Stroke is the card he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, it, it, it counters so much that decks like Merfolk and decks that play blue, some form of blue in it, has a trouble with it. It's like, what do you say against decks that are like, hey, I'm going to cast six drops and higher? Oh, well, this card you, says You counter. mess up their mana base is what you do, because the only decks that do that in modern are decks like Tron and Ponza and obviously Amulet Titan yeah. that are just trying to ramp themselves. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with playing that, though. You know, I'll counter Disdain something that costs four Grayer, and if I'm playing Snapcaster Mage, I do it again. Disdainful Stroke only works against those decks, though, and like sometimes, in very rare instances, control. True. That's, True. A, that's about it. Yeah. There's I mean, no there's no other situation where that card is good. That's that's why I don't even consider it when I'm building my decks. I, I try to make some room in my sideboard just to have at least two of them. You don't need no, no more than two. No, I say zero. I say you find another way around those decks. Tell me which way. Blood Moon. In a mono blue Merfolk deck. In a mono blue Merfolk deck? Tell no. Me. <laughs> okay. I, but I'm but I'm telling you, Blood Moon shuts this deck down. Oh, you know what blood or you know what he could put in? Vapor Snag. He could put in Vapor Because snag. then it, 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 kill, it slowly puts um, Titan down a life, and it gets rid of their... I'm going to double strike you with this huge 8 attacking creature with double strike to hit you for 16. Um, but that's not going to hit for 16 the next time, because there's going to be several ways... There's going to be several different plays that Brandon Barrett will be able to do to make it hit for, like, 12 or 24. Yeah. Or, excuse me, a 10 or 20. Then what would you do? In the later uh, Echo stage of the Echo, that's good. That's the same, same problem. Same problem. Yeah. You you have to have counter magic. Hard counter, ladies and gentlemen. Hard counter. I mean, mana leak's not really going to do it, but there's got to nope, be. Nope. He makes too much things. Uh, logic knot, not enough. No, logic knot would be fine in your if not you're enough deck, because he does in, it too fast. In Merfolk, it's not going to be fine. That's what I'm saying. Merfolk has no re no way of getting their graveyard big enough to withstand the amount of mana that a Titan deck can get. I mean, this is rough, because it's not like... Uh, Spreading Seas just doesn't do anything besides yeah. draw a card. Oh, what was that card that I had in my binder that one time that you were like, why are you playing that? I was like, oh, it's because I didn't have Spreading Seas at the time. Oh, Seas Claim. That's yeah. Same problem. <laughs> same, but then it could be like turn one, Seas Claim, turn two, Spreading Seas, and really and, screw him off on mana. Yeah, but at that point, again, the Karoo lands. Yeah. You're just trading a card for nothing. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, this is gonna be an uphill battle. Yeah, this is. I, I really don't think that Titan. like decks like Murpha can actually handle it. Well, we'll see what Biggie's able to do because Amulet you know, Titan can uh, whiff. I haven't seen it whiff often, but it can. Uh, There's a gemstone mine into, I believe it's Sakura Tribe Scout. Is that the one that taps it, put a land from your hand to the field, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Turn two, Silver Girl Adept, revealing Murf ma uh, yeah, Master of the Pearl Tribe. Just like turn one from last game. Yeah, it's just like the turn. Yeah, it would be nice if they also told us like what they actually uh, sided in and sided out. I like to do that and do that for a courtesy for my opponent, so my opponent knows. They'll they'll, they'll, they'll tell you at the end of the video if you if you watch past the recording. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but fair enough. but we we usually stop before that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, at least we have been. We don't have to. Um, anyway, Boris Garrison going to come down, tapping Sakura Tribe Scout to play another land, recast that Gemstone Mine, and then another Ancient Stirrings. 
feel like he needs an amulet to make it all go well. Yeah. Right now he's a bit behind because he's not finding the amulet. He's got another yeah. Senate growth chamber. That's not a good sign for Brandon Barrett. Nope. Not I think at he all. just flashed the amulet though. I think he might have drawn one and then just didn't have an opportunity to play it. And the Cavern of Souls from Biggie. Mm. Hopefully Colin Murphy. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. He just cast Take a Master three. of the Pearl Trident. Island Walk not going to be a thing in this match. I mean, at least until you cast the Spreading Seas the exact turn. But yeah, there's a second one of those. Second Sakura Tribe Scout. So Barrett's going to have all of his ramps, but no amulets. Yeah. That's a... Uh, going to recharge a gemstone mine again. Uh, not yet. He, he can tap to do it. He, he can tap the Sakura Tribe Scout, the first Sakura Tribe Scout, to replay it. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is what he's planning on doing, so he has it untapped and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, he doesn't have to. He could just play the gemstone mine naturally on his next turn. This get some actually, other land out, like the Suva. See, bec because I am a Merfolk player, I hope that Fish wins this battle. <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. I'm very one-sided on this. Theo is a homer. Okay, I, I've been playing Fish for a very long time, once again, since Lorwyn, so it's just it's a deck that I'm very familiar with. I've known a lot of the ins and outs for it. Goodness, this mutable swinging as a 4-4. Four, four. That's, that's, hey, they, they can get bigger. This is 11 damage coming at Brandon Barrett here. Yep. He's Four, considering just taking five, six, all of it. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep, that's 11. That's 11 damage. That's a lot, man. Can you handle that? Biggie making Can optimal Brandon. use of his mana this game. Oh, entirely, yes. And I'm going to be a little interesting if, if he had a card like that playmat of his tap down the mana. <laughs> and the Sakura Tribe Scouts are just going to chump block. Yeah, chump block the two biggest one, and he's for the one that has not summoning sickness. Yeah. Before damage, flash into land, it is that gemstone line. Yeah, makes you wonder if he has anything else better in his hand. Pearl Trident will get through for, nope, wrong way. Three. For three, go to 14. Yep. That's still a lot of damage he's looking at next turn, especially if he plays another Lord. He's Ooh. staring down the barrel of 14. He's got lethal on board, Biggie does. But there's the Summoner's Pack. He's got enough mana to cast the Primeal Titan. Does it? And it's going to trigger, but he doesn't have the amulet. Yeah, so it's not going to do much. So he saves himself from lethal here, barring some kind of removal spell or a spreading seize, but... Hmm. This is interesting. I wonder if he does what I think he's going to do. I think Biggie might be holding on to two Regeries. So if he goes Regery and another Merfolk spell, that's still game, I think. Because, yeah, that would be 14 from 2-5... Or I don't no. think I don't think I would no, play. No, it wouldn't be game actually because he needs the muta vault. I don't think I would play a uh, Regery and a uh, Merfolk. Oh no, we've seen lots of Regeries. I've, I've noticed shop. that, but I just I'm I'm a little curious on why. Because it lets you untap your lands and play like three Merfolk all in the same turn. It's very explosive. Oh, I've done the play in the past. Brandon going to find a Colney Garden and a Vesuva copying Colney Garden. Just getting some chump walkers yeah. out there. What a smart move. I mean, yeah, don't disagree. Two plant tokens going to come laugh down. If he plays a spreading season, something, and just overruns him. I love Colney Garden. It was one of my favorite cards from World Wake. Remember that? That old stupid green-white uh, uh, landfall deck that I used to play yep. with the Abomination Angels and the Palaka Worms? Yep. Old, uh, old school multiplayer, right? Old anarchy games. Uh, I miss those games. We should bring them back here to <laughs> Neverboard. Uh, it's called Brawl. That's a new format coming out. The mini commander format that only uses standard I, cards. Do you, see, I'm, I, I want to play my old cards. I don't want to play standard cards. Okay, there's a Regery. There's one Regery. Let's see what Biggie's follow-up is. What? The new boss tapped. It's not going to be available to attack. Obviously, you're going to tap down the Primeal Titan here. Uh, what I is that second card? Uh, I think that's... Oh, it, it's Harbinger of the Tides. Oh. So it's going to bounce Primal Titan right back to Brandon's hand. Oh. Not a bad play at all. So only the plants are going to be available to block. Yeah. This is not going to be lethal, but it's going to be a lot. Let's see exactly how much. Silver Gill Adept's going to get plus three, plus three. So it's a 5-4. Wait a minute. A 5-4 and two four fours. So this is going to be 13. Brandon could technically take all of this. What did he tap down? 
He tapped down the Primeval Titan so that Harbinger of the Tides could bounce it. Okay, I get it. Okay, because the ta it can only do a tap permanent. Yeah, Got it. yeah, only tap creatures. Okay. For some reason, I think it, I thought it could do any. That's why I was like, why didn't he tap no, a token too? No, no, no. It's not that good. The uh, the only other upside of Harbinger of the Tides is that it uh, can be flash. cast for flash for an extra four. two. Yeah. So Brandon going to take four, go to ten, as the Lord of Atlantis gets See, through. See, I feel like this is where he's, his downside is. Why is the land tapped? Because he had to pay for the summoner's uh, pack. Summoner's pack, yeah, that's right. Uh, now, there's, there's an amulet. Uh, now, now, now he's, now he's going to be cooking with gas if he can survive this next I, turn. I don't think he can because that's a lot of damage right now. Each of his creatures are getting plus three that are not a lord, and each of his lords are getting plus two. That's that's way too much. Just with the the two that are not lords, they're fives. Maybe it's worth keeping the spreading seas in against this deck after all. Karoos or no Karoos. That's what I'm saying. You just need a spreading seas, slap it on one thing, and then you you in. But Brandon's only got the it. one land play, so he's just gonna get the Simic Growth Chamber out and pass the turn. I wonder if he realized that he's dead. Bouncing the colony garden to reset it. Oh yeah, he's totally dead on board. He, he but is we, dead. Unless... I don't. I don't know what Brandon might have in hand, or if he's just bluffing. I, that's what I say. He he is clearly dead. <laughs> this is way too much damage. I don't think he can handle that. Hey, we've seen. We've see, seen, this is since, we've seen better turnarounds. See now, this is what this is a bad thing right here. Okay, if I was him, I would have played a card. Like a Merfolk, just played a Merfolk to make sure that the Reju trigger activates because it doesn't have to be successfully cast or in order to activate the ability. So he could have tapped down Brandon's white source or his red source in case if he was playing something like Path, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix, he, to get rid of that. It doesn't get rid of it, though, because he just taps it, it in response. It taps it down because then when he enters into... Because no, he can tap it for mana in response. I, I realize it's, that. It's completely pointless. You don't have to tap anything to... No, that's completely pointless. I like to make sure my, you know, put all my eggs in one basket to make sure I'm going to no, kill them. No, that's a completely pointless use of Reedry. All Biggie had to do was swing and just hope Brandon didn't have anything. And of course he didn't, so we're going to go to game three. Yep. I'm really happy that the Merfolk deck won this <laughs> one so far. Why do you have to be so mean to Amulet Titan? It's not... It, it's one of the three decks I don't like. <laughs> and, I, and I know Brandon personally. Me and him have played a lot of games together. It's He knows that I don't like that deck. Even when he was playing Tron in the day. I still didn't like him when he played Tron. But you don't like big mana decks at all. We I don't. This. I don't. I, I, and this is coming from a person that has tried to build Eldrazi, which is the third big deck, you know, where it's like, hey, I'm going to... The, the Eldrazi Tron deck specifically. We only have yeah. the one powder deck in the shop, and that's Sako's. So, so playing, playing them, playing against them, I just don't like it. Not my cup of tea. Hey, it's actually a little funny because for... Legacy, my most hated deck is Show and Tell. <laughs> That's so bad. It's like anything that cheats out big things, I don't like. Well, it's it's not cheating out a Primal Titan though. You're actually hard casting it. it well, just, for this one, yes, yeah. I don't disagree. An Amelie Titan, you are actually casting it for the full value. It's the same with the Ponza deck off the Utopia Sprawl Arbor Elf combo. Well, not a combo, but synergy. I was gonna say it's definitely not a combo on that. The, the point is, you're making four mana on turn two, and you're getting out, like, a Bloodbraid Elf or a Chandra or something. No like. <laughs> Chris does not like. You don't like that, but you're okay with turn three Primeval Titan. No, I'm not okay with either one of these. <laughs> I told you, I'm not okay with big decks. No. I'm sorry, for anyone that plays Titan, Eldrazi, or Tron, I'm not saying that you guys anything wrong <laughs> against you guys it's just i'm not a he I'm hates a, he hates your guts and he's going to come to your house and flush all your cards down the toilet definitely not definitely not i just i'm going to ha be a very uphill battle me playing against you guys brandon's going to be on the play in this round three very important for him now i have a question will you think it's better for time to be on the play or be on the draw be on the play definitely better definitely for be them. on the play because you want to get to that Titan as quick as possible. I hope then he has the turn one amulet. Because then that will make everything a hell of a lot easier for him. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's see. I wish they flashed their hand so we can see them. Yeah, I can only get a few glimpses of Biggie's hand. I know he's got a Lord of Atlantis, but that's the only thing what I know. What is that that he just played? Uh, I can't tell. 
it, it's a land, whatever it is. And it is that Bajuka Bog? Oh, it's Bajuka Bog. Oh, okay. I don't know why he has it, but it's there. Bajuka Turn two, Boris Garrison. Oh, <laughs> slow, slow start for That's Brandon a, Barry. Yeah, that is a slow start. But Pachuca Bog turn one. Look. I it's, remember it, those days. The, the land, <laughs> the land, yeah, so many world weight cards, right? The land base in this deck is a utility box. Okay, so you're going to find all kinds of strange Why stuff. Why are they in playing it. Knight of the Reliquary then? <laughs> so they could get any land too. Because it's too slow. Because this is not Nightfall. A turn three drop is slower than a turn six drop, ladies and gentlemen. Did you just hear that? <laughs> Uh, it's too slow compared to what the Amulet Titan deck wants to do. It's not functioning as intended right now. I'm starting to wonder why Brandon Barrett kept the hand knowing he's up against an aggro deck. Yeah, maybe he has a uh, power closet? Oh, what's that? Dismember. Dismember. That's uh, oh, but he's, he's got to pay so four much. life. He's got to pay four life to do four, it because it's not a black five, source. Six. He just took six. He took more damage than Doing he would that. have just. Uh, I mean, it's to get rid of a Regery, but at what cost? Uh, that, that hurt. He's going to go to 13 after the calculation error. Yeah, because it, he no longer has the plus one from the Raydry. Simic That's Grow Chamber so bouncing much. the Bajuka Bog. All tap lands from Brandon and no amulet. This is looking very bad for him. Mm -hmm. I agree. Second Mute of Alt coming down for Biggie. Player Lord. I think it's Lord of Atlantis. Yep. Activate Activated Mute of Alt. Make sure you activate the right one. Yep. <laughs> and did. gonna attack for six. Yep. Brandon goes to seven. Lethal damage coming next turn if Brandon cannot dig his way out of this hole. I don't know what he can possibly. I think he just found the amulet. Oh no, it's a Vesuva. Uh, what can he even do here? Um, I can't think of anything. Four color wrath. <laughs> It's got to be something like that, right? Some kind of converge card? Uh, you can't even do a cryptic if you wanted to. And tap. Woodland Wanderer. I want to see Woodland Wanderer. I, I think Brandon just loses. He's trying to think a way out of a play. Oh, Fire Spout. That's a card. I love that he plays that. I need to give him a hug the next time I see him. Deal three damage to and each exile. creature on the ground. And then exile them with the Bajuka Bot. Finally, the Bajuka Bog has some use other than being fodder for the Karu lands. But those two Muta Vaults are still sitting out there. Those two Muta Vaults are going to go to town on him. And Biggie's got another Lord of Atlantis. Yep. One of those Muta Vaults is going to swing for three. Yep. Brandon goes to four, again facing lethal. Fire Spout's not going to get him out of this one. Batter oh, skull. he's got Batter Skull. Oh, that's awesome. That's that's a good answer. I forgot he played that. Uh, oh, but Biggie's got dismember. the Dismember to kill the Germ Token, and yep. I believe that's, that's game. game. There's the yep. handshake. Biggie on Merfolk is going to take this match two to one. So you were curious about the sideboards. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Bajuka Bog was a sideboard card, but I'm pretty sure the Batter Skull was. I'm pretty sure the Batter Skull was also. Oh, look at that hand. That yeah. Was nothing but land. Yeah, I think Brandon just decided not to mulligan for whatever reason. Maybe I think he, he was hoping the Batter Skull was going to get him there. Uh, the Batter Skull and the Fire Spout. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Biggie didn't play that many creatures, and when the Fire Spout came down, it was just way too late. Well, if he waited any longer, it wouldn't have mattered because Fire Spout only deals three. That was a really greedy dismember, too. Yeah. Like, he didn't have his Black Source available at that time, so. Yeah, I think that was a, a bad play for Brandon. Yeah. I mean, he's played that Amulet Titan deck so many times. Oh, Negates, that's pretty smart. I told you, Counter Magic, right? That's one way to do it. I don't, yeah. know, what I don't know what Negate would have countered besides Summoner's Pact. He put in Dismember. He put in... Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they, uh, that's all we're going to see. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, he put in Dismember, and we saw Negates. I mean, it counters Summoner's Pact and uh, Amulets, I guess. Yep. Maybe he... Fun maybe... I don't know. Herco's Recall doesn't really help, because he just replays the darn thing. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Neverboard Gaming Community. Modern Action. Outspring and Theo Kadide. So long, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Yep, have a good day.